Hi everyone, welcome to this calculus lesson. Today we're going to be looking at limits of exponential functions. So let's get right into it. So in this example, we have four graphs and uh, we're just really going to look at the, the limits as they approach, as the functions approach infinity. So let's go ahead and start this. We're going to look at the first one. And uh, we want to see, okay, what's the limit as x approaches negative infinity? So as we're approaching, as we're going to the left, all right, so like we, we can follow this graph, right? So like we could follow this graph and we could follow it up, okay? And since it's going up, we can see, all right, so as we're going to the left here, right? So like here's negative infinity to the left. Um, the, the y values go up to positive infinity. And um, now as the limit as x approaches positive infinity so going to the right we're looking at this graph and it looks like we're approaching this asymptote and we notice that this asymptote is at negative two so uh you know we see it on the graph but not only that like we can get a sketch of this graph from from that right there it says negative two moving on to the second example we're looking at the limit as x approaches negative infinity and um we're approaching the asymptote again and again our asymptotes at negative two and again we can see it in our function okay bam right there is negative two so graphically and a little bit analytically we'll get there a little bit more but we can see all right now that the function is approaching negative two so now the limit of f of x is x approaches positive infinity so as we're going to the right to positive infinity well the y values just keep growing exponentially and we can see, all right, so in that regard, it is going up to positive infinity. Let's go down to our next two examples. So in our next two examples is uh, the limit of f of x as x approaches negative infinity right there. Like we're looking at this and, and I can see, okay, so as I'm going to negative infinity, so I'm reading it on the left side as I go to move more to the left, the y values keep going down. And since they're going down right there, um, we're gonna say it is going down to negative infinity. And then on the right side, we have another horizontal asymptote. We're approaching that horizontal asymptote. And in this case, that horizontal asymptote is at negative one. And again, I just wanna point out like, okay, there's the negative one in the transformation. In our last kind of example, we had the limit of f of x as x approaches negative infinity. So what's happening is we go to the left. So I can see like this function is approaching that asymptote and that asymptote as we're going to negative infinity is at the y value is at two. And again, we can see it positive two right there in the function. And the limit of f of x as x approaches positive infinity. So we can go down right here and we're going down to negative infinity. The y values just keep decreasing right there. So let's look at this. So in order to determine a limit as x approaches negative infinity or positive infinity for an exponential function, we really need to know what the graph is going to look like. So we really need to be able to take the function and see these graphs in our head, okay? So what we've seen above, there's actually three possible solutions that we can get um, for the limit of an exponential function. First, it could have been going up to positive infinity or it could have been going down to negative infinity. And that was in the left direction or the right direction um, as x approached positive or negative infinity. But in one of those directions, an exponential function will go up or down. It, it'll do it one way or another. So what's the third way? And in, in each of our examples, one of our answers, either to the left side or to the right side, the function would always approach that horizontal asymptote that was in the function. So whatever that value was, so the value of the horizontal asymptote. So whatever the value of the horizontal asymptote, and uh, we were kind of looking at it just a little bit, but whatever that value was in that case um, at the end of the function, you know, that was going to be one of the limits, either left-hand limit or the right-hand limit for positive or negative infinity. So something to look at. And now I want to take a look at, all right, so we've seen, we've seen the graphs above. We just really want to remember some, what are the rules? Like how can we determine if something's going to be a growth or an exponential decay function? Very basically, we're going to look at, okay, so our first option is growth. And normally when we're talking about these, it's, um, we have a times b to the x. That's going to be an exponential function because x is in the exponent there. 
And so when b was greater than one, we had um, an exponential function. So when b was greater than one, we had exponential growth. But also there was no horizontal asymptotes or horizontal reflections. And so if we're looking at this, this is, this is very similar to what we had in example two above. So now when we have decay, that's when uh, B is going to be in between zero and one. So in between zero and one. And again, there were no horizontal reflections. And when uh, a good example of this one would be something like, okay, here's example number one. And what I mean by horizontal reflections is, okay, we had A, B, but then the X and the exponent was negative X. So in that case, well, uh, that would be a horizontal reflection and um, we'd have two more rules to follow. So that would be growth. So basically, uh, if B was in between zero and one, it would be growth if we had a horizontal reflection. And then um, we'd have decay kind of like, a, it would be like the opposite of these two. So when B is greater than one and there is a horizontal. So these are gonna be your notes for the beginning part of section 1.3 here. And um, re really what you wanna take this time to do is just take the time to understand, okay, what's the difference between growth and decay? Pull up a list of growth and decay functions. Maybe you have some notes from previous classes from algebra or some pre-calculus or trigonometry classes, and you're looking at exponential growth and decay, and just see if you can identify, all right, what, what are the main components here? If I wanted to draw a sketch, would I be able to identify, okay, this is a growth function, this is a decay function, and honestly, uh, just determining whether a function was growth or decay from the graph is one of the more tougher parts of these functions. In our next video, we're gonna go over these examples together. So you can tune in for that video next if you wanna see, okay, how can we really go through all of these functions that are coming up? And then don't forget, you do have your homework after that video. If you need any help understanding growth and decay functions and the, the limits for exponential functions, please reach out to me. I'm Mr. Hernandez and I'm always here to help. Hey.